For our final scripture this week, where we've looked at the raising of Lazarus, I want to direct your attention to Paul's letter to the Romans, to chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And uh, this is part of Paul's discussion of both life in the flesh, or living according to the desires of one's physical body or physical needs, and life in the spirit. And then he goes on further to talk about the role of the spirit and us being adopted into God's family. But it's verses 1 through 11, and especially verse 11, that I want to focus on. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. I selected this verse because obviously Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And this is a foreshadowing of Jesus will also rise from a tomb that had a stone covering it. And then the promise that Paul writes about to the church and Christians in Rome is that the same spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead um, dwells in us. God's spirit lives in us when we become believers. And we also will experience a resurrection uh, through the spirit that dwells in us. So one of the great hopes that we have as Christians is that we do not look at death the same way as people who don't share our beliefs, who don't believe in the resurrection of Christ and don't believe there's anything and just when you're dead, you're dead and that's the end of it. And that belief gives us hope. And it's by the Spirit of God that this happens. And Paul, throughout his letters, contrasts life in the Spirit versus life in the flesh. And we see this in Galatians, for example, in Galatians chapter 5, where Paul details what life in the flesh looks like and all the negative behaviors and habits that are a part of just indulging whatever physical whim we want to do. It's like not controlling our temper, for example. And then he contrasts that with life in the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, which we talk about so much here at Brewster Baptist Church because it's what we're all called to as disciples of Jesus, to be people who are modeling uh, all the fruit of the Spirit. So um, one of the things people will sometimes ask me is, well, how do I know if the Spirit of God is in me? And it's not necessarily because of some physical manifestation or something. It's simply, have you put your trust fully in Christ? And that in life and in death, um, you are believing in him, putting your faith and trust in him, seeking to follow him, knowing that he will lead you always in God's good path. I pray that will be true of you.